Hello friends, this video on comparing quantities part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's see what is percentage in simple interest. So how is this interest given back to the bank? Like I said that you give some extra money to the bank. So who decides that how much extra money you have to give to the bank? Obviously the bank because the bank has given you money. So the bank will decide how much extra money the bank needs. So this interest is generally given in percent for a period of one year. That means let's say that you have taken some amount of money. You have taken rupees X from the bank. Now if you return that rupees X after one year, you give maybe let's say 10% interest for that rupees to the bank. Let's say if you return it after three years, then every year you have to give that extra 10%. So at the end of three years, you pay the, the interest, the total interest that you pay for three years is a lot more than the total interest that you paid for one year. So basically this in interest is always given as percentage. And this percentage, this percent of interest, you have to give every year. That means if you take more number of years to return the money to the bank, you will end up giving a lot of interest to the bank. Right? So that is why it is always wise that if you take a loan from a bank, try to give it back or try to return it to the bank as early as possible. So, you, so that you do not end up paying huge interests for that money. So how do we denote interest? It is denoted as X percent per year or per annum. And this is written as X percent per annum. So this X could be anything. The interest rate could be 10% per annum. It could be 0.5% per annum. So it could be anything. So this is how it is denoted. So per annum means per year. So every year you have to give 10% interest. So this 10% would be on the principal. That means the amount which the bank, the money that the bank gave you. Let's say, let me give you an example. Let us say that this is you and this is the bank. So the bank gave you rupees 100 or the bank lend you rupees 100. You borrowed rupees 100 from the bank. So basically your principal is rupees 100. Now let's say that the bank gave it to you at an interest of rupees of 10% per annum. That means at the end of one year, after one year, what is the amount that you will return to the bank? Principal amount which was 100 plus 10% of the principal amount. So basically you will return to the bank 100 plus 10 by 100 into 100. Which is actually equal to 110. So you took rupees 100 but you are returning rupees 110. So basically this is how the rate of interest works. Now in case you do not return it in one year. So if you are returning it the next year in that case what is happening. For this year also you pay 10% of 100. For the next year also you pay 10% of 100. So instead of 110 you might pay 120. If you are returning it after 3 years you might pay 130 and so on. So if you take longer duration to return that money to the bank you end up paying more interests. So this is the concept of simple interest. Now let me take an example. Let us say that rupees 10,000 is invested by the bank at 5% interest rate per annum. Invested means the bank gave that money so that it can make profit out of it. So the bank has maybe uh, lended that money to someone like us who, who is borrowing that money from the bank. So rupees 10,000, what is this rupees 10,000? It is nothing but the principal because this is the money which is given by the bank. So this is the principal. And what is that 5% interest rate per annum? This is the percentage of interest that you have to pay to the bank every year. So how much is the interest? How much interest you will have to pay to the bank at the end of one year? So interest at the end of one year will be equal to 5% of the principal amount. That means 5% of rupees 10,000. So this would be equal to 5 by 100 into 10,000. So this would be equal to rupees 500. That means at the end of one year, how much money you have to return to the bank? This 10,000, which, which is the principal, plus 
this interest which is rupees 500 so basically the amount that you will return to the bank after one year will be equal to rupees 10,000 plus rupees 500 that is rupees 10,500 this is the money that you will have to return to the bank. So this was about the interest that you will return after one year. Now let us see what would be the interest that you will have to pay for multiple years because sometimes it might happen that since you have taken a loan of a heavy amount, you cannot return it back in one year. You might need five years to return that money. So in that case, how will, they re how will you pay the interest? Now, as the number of years increase, interest also increase. So, if you return the money in 5 years, you will pay more interest. If you return the same money in 10 years, you will pay even more interest and so on. So, what basically happens is this. So, let us say that the principal, that means the money which was given by the bank to you, that principal is P. So, we are just denoting it with P. And let us say that the time for which the money was borrowed. So time for which you borrowed the money is T. Is T years. So you borrowed it for T years. This T could be anything. It could be 5, 10, 20, 30, anything. Right? So let's say that you have borrowed this money P for T years. And let us say that the percentage of interest that is offered by the bank, this is called the rate of interest. So as you saw, right, that interest is always uh, offered in percentage by the bank per annum, percentage per annum. So this percentage per annum is called rate of interest. So let's say that the rate of interest that is offered by the bank is R per annum, that is R percent per annum. Perfect. Okay. Now, if I ask you to calculate how much interest you have to pay at the end of one year. So, interest at the end of one year. So, we have denoted interest as I. So, interest at the end of one year would be how much? It would be R percent, that is the interest rate that is given by the bank. R percent of the principal amount. And since it is at the end of one year, so this is multiplied by 1. So, you have to give it one time only after the end of that one year. So, this would be R percent of P which is equal to R by 100 into P. Now, if we want to calculate the interest at the end of T years. Now, this T could be anything. It could be 5, 10, 15, 20, anything. So, what would be the interest that you will have to pay it at the end of T years? In this case, you are paying this same interest which you earlier paid for one year. This interest you are paying every year for T years. Let's say that maybe this value is rupees 10. So, let's say for one year you paid rupees 10 as interest. For two years, how much interest you will pay? Rupees 10 into 2. For 3 years, how much interest you will pay? Rupees 10 into 3. For 4 years, you will pay 10 into 4 and so on. Similarly, the interest that you will pay for T years is nothing but the interest that you paid for 1 year multiplied by T. So, this is the interest that you would pay after multiple years. So, when you have borrowed money for multiple years, then the interest and this interest is called simple interest. Why simple interest? Because here the interest every year the interest is calculated on the principal. So, the principal doesn't change. Now, you might think that, okay, so do we have another type of interest as well where the principal doesn't remain constant? Yes, we do have and that is called compound interest. So, you will learn about compound interest in your higher classes. For now, let us focus on simple interest. So, the in simple interest that you pay at the end of T years is nothing but P into R into T divided by 100. Now, a lot of times I have seen that children just memorize this formula of simple interest. You, you, can, you actually will come across a lot of children who would have learned this formula for simple interest, but they would have never understood from 
where did they get this formula so you really did not need to memorize it because you would have seen it for yourself there is nothing to memorize it is just that simple interest at the end of t years would be nothing but the rate of percentage on the principal that is r percentage of p multiplied by t so that gives you p into r into t by 100 so this is how we calculate simple interest for multiple years so see these are very uh, practical concepts and these are very important as well so please give a lot of attention on all these and also solve a lot of questions Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.